Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to a little knitting update. Um, yeah, I haven't done one of these videos for a long time, but it has been much requested. So, you know, I thought I would do one because I do make these videos for you. Uh, so yeah, um, I haven't done a knitting update for quite a while, I think. Um, I'm trying to think when my last one was a long time ago, months ago, um, just because uh, I work in a knitting shop, that's my job, and sometimes when I film these videos I feel like I kind of go into work mode and it's not so much like as fun as I want it to be, um, in all honesty, but yeah, I because I haven't done one for a while I thought let's go for it. So, um, I have been kind of amassing some stuff to show you guys. Um, <clears throat> sorry if I'm if I'm kind of a bit croaky. Sorry, it's it's the morning. It's kind of early. My boyfriend is still asleep, so <laughs> um, if I am speaking quietly, that's why. I hope the camera picks up okay. Um, so yeah, I've been amassing my kind of projects and things that I have been working on recently. Um, I only have two finished items to show you. Um, I think, I don't know, I feel like I've just been casting loads of stuff on and not finishing things, which is a bit annoying. Um, so I have some, I'm just gesturing down here because they're in a, a box down here because it's quite a lot. <laughs> um, I have some works in progress to show you. I have two finished objects and um some acquisitions uh and i also have this stack of books here um which i thought maybe i could talk about as well um i don't think i've talked about any of these books on my channel and um these are just some books that i've read in the past few months that i've really enjoyed and i kind of wanted to share those with you so I hope that's all okay. I will do the books last and I'll put a timestamp in the description so you can, if you know, you can cut that out if you're not interested in the books part. Um, but yeah, knitting. Um, I'll show you finished objects first because I think that makes sense. So this is, I finished this quite a while ago in June, it's now August, oops. Um, but I finished um, this test knit for Ozetta. This is the Air Tea um, and it has this amazing detail on the back with this kind of sideways panel. Um, it's got this beautiful I-cord neckline and all the edges have an I-cord edge as well. Um, this was designed for a really beautiful uh, cotton wool blend yarn, 50-50 um, cotton wool, but I used pure uh, wool. This I knitted in Mondim from uh, Rosa Pomar. This colour I had in my stash, so I just thought I would use it up. Um, I only needed 200 grams, which was great. I did, as I normally do, I did shorten the body and the sleeves a little bit just so it fitted a bit more how I like things to fit, um, but I've actually gotten loads of wear out of this so far. Um, oh, sorry about this. I feel like the light coming through the window is blowing out the colour. But yeah, um, I've gotten a lot of wear out of this so far because it has not been a very hot summer in London. <laughs> Fingers crossed, touch wood, um, that we don't get some kind of crazy heat wave. But yeah, it's just not been very hot here. so. I've actually been able to wear wool still. Um, I have worn this t-shirt with kind of like a sleeveless top underneath um, and it's really nice layered over jumpsuits and it looks nice with skirts. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten a lot of wear out of it. And I did test knit this, so I kind of got the pattern ahead of time and stuff. So yeah, um, I will, I've been thinking I would make or I will, sorry, make another one. Um, but I'm thinking about making like a, just like a vest version without the sleeves. Wait, I'm trying to kind of fold the sleeve in. So 
I think it would kind of end up like a cap sleeve because this um, shoulder seam is wider than my actual shoulder if you can see that. So I think a vest version would be really nice and I have some yarn that I think would be nice for it which I'll show you in a little while. Um, so that's the air tee. I'll put ra uh, links in the description to all of the Ravelry pages for these as well. Okay, so next up I have the Boom Tank by Kiyomi Bergen. Um, I knitted this in Darren Matura Robinson, took me a second, um, and I have also gotten loads of wear out of this. I really like this. I, I think it's just like a really great kind of basic and again I've worn it with a t-shirt underneath but I've also worn it with a sleeveless top underneath kind of or almost like as a top um so the Robinson is 70% wool and 30% cotton so it's still pretty woolly um as summer summery you know summery yarns go it's pretty woolly yeah, so it feels quite cottony, even though it's only 30% cotton, and it has um, kind of a quite a muted colour palette, I would say, because the yarn is plant dyed. Um, it doesn't say what plants are used to dye which colours, but yeah, um, I saw these two colours together in the box of yarn at work, and I just thought, oh, that, that needs to be something stripey. <laughs> Um, I had planned on doing the boom tank in something else that I can't even remember now. Something from Stash, I think I was thinking. Because um, a friend of mine has made this pattern but used a four ply. And I think she knitted a bigger size and used slightly smaller needles. And I that was my original plan for this pattern. Um, but plans change. <laughs> and yeah, I decided to use the Robinson instead. And I had two balls of the grey and one of the yellow. Um, I'm just gonna... Yeah, I just looked, I just looked at the leftovers under my desk and I think I probably only used about 50 grams of the yellow and 150 of the grey. So yeah, it really didn't use much yarn. Again, I modified the pattern, I made it sh considerably shorter um, and I also altered the neckline because it had a folded neckband which is nice but I, I feel like that's better for winter items. I just feel like a folded neckband is quite like chunky and cosy so I made the uh, armholes and the neck the same length can't speak. I made the ribbing the same length on the arm and neck holes. So yeah, I think it looks nice that they match. Um, what else is there to say about this pattern? Oh, I knitted it with more positive ease than the pattern recommends. I made the size five, I think. I made quite a big size. Um, but I think the finished bust, actually, let's measure it. Um, I didn't, I didn't swatch. Don't don't come for me. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it is quite uh, oversized. Where's my tape measure? But that's the fit that I wanted and that I intended. So let's see. Okay, so the heart bust width is fifty six centimeters. So that's one hundred and twelve finished bust circumference. Which is, hang on a second. I think it's about 45 inches finished bust circumference. I have a 36 inch bust, so it's got nearly 10 inches of positive ease on me, nine inches of positive ease. Um, but I really like that. And also it stops it being too hot because it's quite swingy. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this pattern. Um, well, <laughs> I like the finished object. I have to say the pattern is not the best. Um, I think it's just more of like a, I think it's one of Kiyomi Bergen's like earlier patterns and um, I just think that the the change that I would make if I made it again would be to do sloped bind off because around the neck and on the shoulders because it doesn't have that but I think if Kiyomi were to write this pattern now she would put that stuff into it. Um, this pattern is in the fifth anniversary issue of Pom Pom um, and I think that 
that issue when did that issue come out i think it's at least six or seven years ago that that issue came out so yeah i think that it's just it it's just would if if it were written now it might be different you know with some different techniques in but um it's you know it turned out really nicely so i think yeah i'm really pleased with it so that's the boom tank oh another detail is that the ribbing is um two by one so i think it i don't know i think the ribbon looks really lovely and neat um i like a two by one rib um okay so two finished objects not that's not much is it um but let's look down here okay so starting at the top i'm doing a new test knit for orlan Sush. i'm really not sure if that's how you say her name but um yeah if you know how to pronounce orlan's name please leave me a comment because <laughs> i feel like i always pronounce her name wrong but i've done loads of test knits for orlan and I really love her patterns. So whenever I get a test knit email from her, I kind of know I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do it. So yeah, when I got this email from her, a, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was really excited. The cardigan is beautiful. Um, and I actually already had some stuff in my stash that I could use, which is great. So here we are. Um, I'm gonna put it on for you uh, so you can see because it's, it's that stage where I can put it on. So bear with me a second. Okay, here we go. So, um, yeah, what is there to say? It's a really nice V-neck cardigan. It's not too much of a deep V. Um, and it's got beautiful cable details all down the sleeve. So these will continue all the way down to the cuff. And then the cable is now coming through into the body and it kind of flows down and into the ribbing. And then the uh, button band is garter stitch, but the edging on the cuffs and the hem is the two by two rib. So yeah, I love it. Um, it's such a pleasure to knit. And I think I'm gonna get a lot of wear out of this. I don't have anything this color. Um, I've been calling it in my head, I've been calling it my spooky season cardigan, which, you know, I'm, I'm in the spooky mood. <laughs> um, so yeah. I think it's lovely. I'm going to take it off because I'm getting hot. Um, but I am knitting. Oops. So I'm knitting the size three. Um, I think there's like nine or ten sizes. That's normally what Olan does with her patterns. Um, it's quite oversized. I think the finished circumference of this one is like 45 and a half inches. So yeah, it's got quite a lot of positive ease. So I think it's going to be really cozy. Um, and what else was I going to say? Oh, the yarn. I'm knitting it in Dalana Rustica. Um, this is really lovely Spanish wool that we have at work. And um, I've had this in my stash for a while. I got it for a uh, an Issaca vest I had planned to make. But when I got the test knit call for this cardigan, I thought, oh, I already have the Dalana. I'm just going to use that. And yeah i don't normally go for like a totally solid color um but i really like it i think it's so nice and i'm really pleased that i have this lovely mustard color because i have a lot of clothes that are navy blue so yeah i think it will look really nice with navy blue it looks good with denim it looks nice with black so yeah um i'm really really excited to finish this i actually only cast this on last thursday today is saturday so this is <laughs> this is just over a week's worth of work and i'm like pretty far through the body so it's quite fast it's on a 4.5 millimeter needle um the deadline i have for this is uh sometime in the middle of september so i have about a month to go um and you know i will finish it because i've knitted all this fast um so yeah, the pattern will be out, I think probably in October. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. I'll put the link to Orland's Ravelry page in the description because um, all of her patterns are so nice. And I actually have another whip that is one of her patterns. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, let me move this. Okay, 
I'm picking the crate up because it just, I'm just, it makes sense. Okay, so my next um, work in progress is the Cameo Vest. Um, I've had this on the go for ages and I just, I really want to finish it. I had, I put it on hold when I did the test knit for Ozetta and then it was summer and then I didn't really come back to it. So yeah, um, this is the Cameo Vest. I've made this before. I will put a picture somewhere of me wearing my um, my first one. I test knitted the pattern um, when it was coming out. This is an Orlan Souche pattern. Uh, it was in an issue of Liner Magazine, but now it's available as a single pattern. So yeah, um, let me show you. I'm just trying to organize it all. So um, I'm knitting another one just because I absolutely love this pattern. And I wear my first one a lot. So yeah, um, it has this amazing texture in the body and then this beautiful kind of traveling cable pattern down each side of the bottom band. So I have one side totally finished. Uh, the side is finished. And then I'm working on the, um, the right front side and then I'll need to do the back and then, you know, all the ribbing and stuff. But um, I finished this side quite quickly. So when I'm able to work on this again, I think it'll go pretty fast. I am knitting this in Durerum Natura Gilead, one of my favorite yarns. Um, I have had problems in the past with this not wearing very well, but um, I'm really hoping that this wears okay because I love this color. Um, this colour is called Arable. It's kind of like um like a really beautiful brownish orange. Uh, I've actually been finding, looking at it next to my um, Dalana yarn, let's see, that I think this looks very red next to this, but I've always thought of this as an orange, so I don't know. It's playing tricks on me. But I'm really loving this yarn and the project together. Um, there's not much to say about this because I've made it already, but um, I'm, yeah, I need to get a move on with some stuff and just like finish things. Um, and I really do want to wear this cameo in the autumn. Um, so I need to finish it. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I might take it on holiday with me. I'm going on holiday in September to Greece um, with my boyfriend and some of our friends. So yeah, maybe that's my holiday project. I hadn't thought about that. Um, so speaking of holiday, I have another project here that looks a bit weird right now. <laughs> um, I'm making a crocheted bag to take on holiday with me. Um, so <laughs> this is this is how far I've gotten. Um, so it's got like this kind of flat-ish base and then I'm just going up doing single crochet stripes. Um, so I had hoped that this would fit paperbacks and it does, or I did, you know, I did measure it. So it fits paperback. Um, I think I'm hoping to make it about as tall as a paperback. I don't know if I'll, um, I might have to just make it sort of this sort of size. <laughs> um, but we'll see. Um, I'm really enjoying this like change of pace. I'm no, I'm no crocheter, you guys. Um, I'm definitely a knitter but I can crochet. So yeah, this has just been quite a nice change of pace. I've had to stop and put it on hold for a little while because I got a blister from like the way that I use my crochet hook um, because I have the yarn wrapped around kind of my left hand and then I have the crochet hook in my right and just the way that I crochet, the hook kind of grazes on the top of my finger and um, I developed quite a large blister. Um, so. <laughs> So yeah, it's not, I haven't worked on it for a couple of weeks, but um, I hope I can finish it in time. Again, we're going away like middle of September by the time my test knit is due. So if it's not ready for the holiday, maybe I'll just take it and finish it when I'm on holiday. Um, and then, you know, it's, I can still use it at other times. Um, so I'm using Rauma Pellini, um, which is, a cotton linen 50 50 blend so this these colors are to that amazing they're a witre design like collaboration colors because she does a lot of work with Rauma I think um, 
I got this from a new yarn shop in my area, which is called My Ivory Room. Um, she's gotten some really lovely yarns recently and I, I've always wanted to try this one out. So when I saw that she had it, I went to get some. Um, I got two balls of each color and I've got this much left of the first two. So I think I've definitely got enough. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really nice, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but um, let me, mm, yeah, there you go. So it's like a chainette construction. Um, so I'm going to have to focus myself again. There we go. <laughs> um, it's a chainette construction. So it's not very, you know, cotton can sometimes be quite splitty. Um, this is not like that. So yeah, cotton can sometimes be kind of splitty, but this isn't like that at all, um, which is nice. And yeah, I'm really enjoying working with it. It's just because it is like a plant fiber it's a bit more a bit harder on your hands um than wool because it has no no stretch but yeah um it's lovely to work with so that's that okay so my last whip is kind of a long running not long running but he's taken me a while and i say he because <laughs> i'm making an ant eater well it's actually a tamandua which is a type of ant eater um, he's from the Animal Friends of Pika Pau book two um, and I went away in uh, end of June beginning of July to house it for my parents while they were away on their holidays um, and I, because I was away for two weeks and I had their house all to myself well I had the cat too but yeah um, I decided to just like go kind of all out and take loads of projects. So this was one of the projects I took with me there. Um, I have worked on him since, but yeah, I just need to get back to him again. Because I'm doing this test knit now, I kind of feel like I need to prioritize the test knit. Um, so yeah, but let's have a look at him. Um, I'm using, by the way, I'm using Rosarios 4 for nature. Um, I've done something weird with the focus of my camera, I'm really sorry. So this is also a chain net construction, but this is pure cotton. Um, and I'm holding this double. So it is quite, um, again, quite hard on your hands and it's kind of eating up yarn, but that's fine. Um, so <laughs> here are his little dungarees. They're all finished with a little hole for his tail. Um, and <laughs> here is his body. And wait, let me get his head. Okay, here's his head. His ears are just like safety pinned on. He has a very long snoot and he's very, look, he's quite big. <laughs> um, and then I have uh, one arm finished. So the way she, uh, does the increases his paw kind of curves which is so nice so that's his little arm and i am waiting to do the second one because i've run out of this like bleached white i only have cream so i don't know tell me what you think if i should um just keep going with the cream or if i should get more bleached white i don't really want to just order one ball of white because we don't have that color at work um, and then I started, because I ran out of white, I started working on his tail. Here's his tail and I still have more to go. So it's going to be very, it's going to be very, very long. <laughs> but the tail will mean that he will stand up by himself, uh, which is really cute. So yeah, um, the dungarees were supposed to be all in one colour, but I ran out of the purple right around the point at which I was starting the, this um, bib. Uh, so I just decided to join a new colour because we don't have this yarn at work. It was something from Stash. So um, I just I just grabbed a ball of yarn from work and started doing the bib. And then I picked up and did like a slip stitch edging on the on these little like cuffs just to tie it in. That wasn't a part of the pattern, but I thought it tied in the colours nicely. So his name is Monty. That's Monty. Um, I really need to finish him. Um, he's also like eating up toy stopping so um yeah i i don't think i'll need to get any more but 
I think if I want to make another one of these animals, I will have to get some more. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's Monty. Let me just put this away and I'm just going to drink some coffee because my throat's feeling a bit scratchy. Okay, so I'm sorry if it's getting dark as well. I feel like it's going to rain. Um, fingers crossed it doesn't rain until I finish filming. Um, let's go quickly. <laughs> so I have two kind of summer top quantities here that I have been or that have kind of recently acquired. Um, so let's turn all the labels the right way. I have four balls of uh, Rosarius for Madragoa in this like really beautiful like periwinkle blue. Um, this colour number is colour mm, 19 and the Madragoa is a pure silk and um, I have I've knitted a swatch with it uh, for the shop um, but I haven't knitted anything for myself yet. I picked this up to do a Tolster tee when I saw that she had released the four ply version of the Tolster I was really into that idea and thought that that's what I would use this yarn for um, but kind of on reflection um, the Tolster tee doesn't have the sort of neckline that I really like because um, I think it kind of has a bit of like a, almost a bit of a boat neck. I think that that is um, a, sometimes a bit symptomatic of a, just like a top down raglan construction that you can't get like a really nice crew neck shape. So yeah, um, I... Are you out there? Hello, we just had a brief intermission for some breakfast. What I was saying about the silk, the Madragoa, was that I was going to use it for a Tolster tea and yeah, um, the uh, boat neck situation, or it's not a boat neck, but it's also not a crew neck. So I'm not sure about that. I think what I now want to use this for is the vest version of the air tea. I think that that would be really nice and I think I will do you know just kind of like the cap sleeve and then put the eye cord edging that the neck hole has uh you kind of I think you knit two rounds and then do the eye cord cast off and I think that looks really nice so yeah I think that's what this will be uh one day <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it in time for the end of the summer to be honest um but maybe I'll just knit it in the winter time and wear it like with long sleeve tops or something I don't know it might make a good layer like under another jumper we shall see okay so then my other acquisition is uh two skeins of Kalinka linen so this is a really beautiful pure linen from Sweden um I got these two colors which is like another sort of periwinkle but more more blue I would say and then a chocolate brown um so i want to turn this into a top as well um the kalinka is kind of like a sport weight linen um it has 320 meters for 100 grams so i've got 304 no duh, 640 meters so i think that there's enough for a sleeveless top um I haven't decided quite decided on a pattern yet. I am thinking though, um, there was one I really liked that's quite a new release from a long Avec Anna. I cannot remember the name off the top of my head, but I'll put a picture and the name on the screen. Um, I think that that would be really nice for this. Uh, the gauge might pose a bit of a problem because it, I, I think that the Kalinka is nice. If you want to have quite like a, a solid fabric I think it's best on like a three millimeter needle which is quite small really um, so yeah we'll see um, I might have to knit it as a four ply instead um, but then maybe I don't have enough yardage I'll work it out um, so yeah those are my acquisitions I think that is the end of the knitting chat so yes um, I will now talk to you about some books. Um, I hope that's still interesting for you. Um, yeah, 
so books um i have put myself on a book buying ban for august um yeah uh i <laughs> i got quite a few um gift cards for foils and waterstones for my birthday in june so yeah those i actually still have some um so i feel like i've just bought loads of books in the past few months um and there's also been loads of new releases coming out that i'm excited about so yeah uh the last book that i bought was immortal longings by chloe gong i definitely wanted to buy that book in hardback and then i saw that my local waterstones had signed exclusive waterstones editions so i have that i haven't read it yet but i'm really excited to read it but we're not talking about that we're talking about these <laughs> um so i've got what i'm currently reading here and then i picked out some books that i have just really enjoyed in the past few months and i thought i'd talk to you about them so first off let's start with the book on the top i've got into the drowning deep by mira grant i think this author has written um other kind of like series series i don't even know if that's the She's got a trilogy and then another series um, and Into the Drowning Deep currently stands alone. I really liked this book like I don't know it's one of those books that I keep thinking about even though I read it like three months ago. Um, so this is a kind of a like slow burn thriller horror sort of book. Um, it is set mainly on a ship um and you kind of get this sort of um backstory right at the beginning that's about a documentary film crew that go missing um and they were searching for kind of the, it was a documentary that they kind of make like documentaries about cryptids and you know it's like creatures not recognized by science um and they were looking for mermaids in uh oh um, above the Mariana Trench. So the crew and so it was like everybody on the crew disappeared and the ship was found adrift, nobody on it. Um, but there was recovered film footage that uh, kind of definitively proved that these mermaids do exist, but they're kind of like evil flesh-eating mermaids. <laughs> um, and so we follow the perspective of uh, a female main character what's her name okay her name is tori i forgot because i read this quite a few months ago um and her sister was on the uh ship that you know all the crew disappeared and she is a uh, marine biologist so she's kind of asked asked to be a new member of the crew and um yeah they kind of go off to research what happened and <clears throat> it's like this huge kind of scientific research vessel and they find the mermaids spoiler alert um so yeah i really enjoyed this i read it in like i don't know i read it in like a week it's nearly 500 pages but um i read it really fast and i really enjoyed it so that's into the drowning deep by mira grand and then i read i think i oops Mark. and then i think i read this straight after into the drowning deep i was obviously in like a mm, slow burn horror mood um this is the luminous dead by caitlin starling i've read another one of her books uh the death of jane lawrence which i wasn't super impressed with at the time but again it's one of those books that i think about all the time so i think maybe i need to read it again um but this is another one of her books this is like a um science fiction uh horror so it's it's not a fantasy it's definitely science fiction um it is set on a uh a planet in like a different um a whole different like solar system so it's you know it's very far into the future um and it's about a caving expedition on this planet that's you know kind of it's like the planet is very arid and like you can't really grow anything there so like you know the the main source of like income or whatever on this planet is to be a caver um but 
it's very dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, so the main character is kind of, has kind of like falsified her credentials as to how experienced she is. And she gets, you know, she's in this kind of cave system in this um, like mechanical suit. And she has contact with the uh, surface uh, through like intercom. Um, and yeah the it's kind of got some like well it has got like you know like a, a sapphic romance and um yeah it's it's very i really enjoyed this i think it was less i mean it's described as having like the same creeping dread as annihilation which i love annihilation by jeff vandermeer and i have to say i don't think that this has as much but it's got the same sort of vibe so if you enjoy something like annihilation you should read this because yeah it was good um and i think that the author is you know she's she, it's a it's really well written and i think that this is her first book so yeah i it's not out in the uk in like a uk edition this is the american edition you know they're like really floppy uh, the north american covers um yeah, it only has uh, US and Canadian dollar prices on the back. So, yeah, um, I couldn't find it in a bookshop, but I, I got this on Amazon. So, yeah. Next up, we have Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I think I have mentioned on my channel that I got this book, but I read it in May, I think, and I really liked it. And I want to read her other books now. Um, I think they are kind of marketed as YA, but... I don't know it didn't I find that lots of books that are marketed as YA don't really you know I'm I'm 28 years old and I'm, a, I'm an adult I don't really feel like I'm reading a book aimed at a young adult audience I just really enjoy it so this is set in a really interesting world where like spirits can come back from beyond the grave and be kind of very malevolent and destructive and the main character is a uh, part of kind of like a an order of nuns who are in charge of kind of um, being able to uh, make these souls pass on to the next world um, uh, in order to kind of like save her convent where she lives she has to awaken a revenant spirit um, and that spirit kind of possesses her and helps her um, and she kind of goes on this little quest um, I really liked this world. I really, really hope that Margaret Rogerson writes more books in this world. I thought it was really interesting. It's quite, it gave me like um, Shadow and Bone vibes, you know, kind of like ch the chosen female main character. Um, but it wasn't so much like Shadow and Bone that I was, you know, a bit like mm, about it. I really liked this world. And it does leave it with um, kind of like an open ending. And somebody did tell me that she was planning to write another book and there's some kind of hold up with that. Um, so yeah, I really hope that another one comes out. She has two more books. I'm just looking on the back. A Sorcery of Thorns and An Enchantment of Ravens. I think A Sorcery of Thorns is like a very popular book of hers. Um, which I haven't read, but I would like to read. And I think that has a little spin-off novella as well. So Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then, okay, <laughs> I have two more books here that are kind of a pair. <laughs> so I have previously said on my channel uh, that I wasn't really planning to read any of the Sarah J Maas books because I wasn't really a fan of like, fairy stories um or stories that have fairies in them so again as you know i wasn't planning on reading the cruel prince trilogy by holly black but i have the first book waiting for me um so i decided i wanted to read uh house of earth and blood by sarah j mass because um this is more of like an urban fantasy so it's set in kind of like a uh, modern world but with uh different kind of fantasy creatures and like you know huge fantasy aspect to it so i decided i wanted to read this and 
This book is 800 pages and I read it in a week. <laughs> so I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I don't even know how to start describing this book. This is part of a series called the Crescent City series. Um, there's currently two out. So I read um, House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath. And then the third one is coming out. House of Flame and Shadow is coming out in January. And I'm really excited for that. I think I'm going to like pre-order the hardback edition. Um, and if there's like a Waterstones edition, I will get it because I'm obsessed. Um, so yeah, I would suggest like looking at the... Uh, if you haven't read these books already, I know Sarah J Maas is super popular, so maybe I'm preaching to the choir. But um, yeah, if you haven't read these books before, or if you haven't heard of them, I'd suggest looking the uh, kind of synopsis up online. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed these. They do have like a romance aspect to them. Um, less, I would say, than the... Um, uh, a Court of Thorns and Roses series, which I'm also part of the way through reading. Um, but yeah, I think this world has more complex elements and kind of like uh, politics than the world of Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I really loved these books. I think the, the characters are very, very well written. And I had a really nice conversation about books with um, one of our customers at work who's actually an author um and she said that the sarah j mass books actually got her back into writing and she's now a published author um so yeah she kind of described them as like wish fulfillment so the, her books I, I and i i get what she means now because i've read um the first the first three uh books in the a court of thorns and roses series i'm not getting the next two until I'm off of my book buying ban so yeah I paused on that um but yeah so she described it as like a wish fulfillment which I kind of take to mean that you know when you're like really hoping something happens like these two characters get together or like one character that you love uh doesn't get killed off you know that sort of thing um Sarah J Maas kind of does that so like it's almost like she anticipates what her audience will want and she kind of does that thing that they want. So um, yeah, the ending of this book is insane and I'm really excited to read the third one. I'm just, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. If you've already read it, please leave me a comment because I really need to talk about it with people. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited for the third one to come out in January and I will be reading it probably very quickly. <laughs> um, so yes, that's those two. And also um, these new paperback editions are from Bloomsbury and I think they're so lovely. Uh, the previous UK covers were rubbish. So I'm really pleased that Bloomsbury um, have brought out these really nice covers. So yes, that's those two. And then lastly, I wanna talk about the book I'm reading at the moment, which is Jade War by Fonda Lee. Uh, this is the second book in a trilogy, which is called The Green Bone Saga. Um, I have the third one as well. Um, and I don't think I'm going to read it straight after this because these books are kind of heavy. Um, so these are, this book is the second one. The first one is called Jade City. Um, they're set in a fictional world or a fantasy world. Um, where the um this takes place in a city so i think it's quite urban uh i would say with probably urban fantasy as well um where the city is in a country called jan loon which is uh known for or it's kind of um famous in the world it's set in uh for being the only country in that world that has this kind of jade with magical properties which only certain people can harness so it's kind of also a bit of a like gang series it's kind of a little bit like the godfather with um fantasy elements because it's uh got kind of these two rival clans who are kind of fighting it out for control of the city 
and it's we're, it's kind of set in a world where these clans have huge sway over like the city and its politics so yeah it's quite an epic novel or oh, series sorry so this book has already um several years have passed in this book it's not like one of those books that's set over a few weeks like this book has is spanning years of time in these characters lives um and i suspect the third one will uh be even further into the future because the third one is called jade legacy so the characters that are in this book now have very young children and i suspect that jade legacy is going to have those children as adults i'm not sure um, I'm trying, I, I haven't read the blurb because I don't want to give myself any spoilers because that's happened to me in the past where I've read the blurb of a book and it's had spoilers. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just kind of going into it uh, blind. Um, but yeah, this is taking me quite a long time to read. Um, it has a very small, or it has a pretty small typeface. And uh, how many pages does it have? Um, okay, so we have nearly 600 pages in here um so it's a pretty long book um i think it's taking me about i've been reading this for about a week and a half two weeks i'm on page 453 so i have about 200 pages left no uh, about 100 and oh 130 pages left okay so that's not too bad um hopefully i'll finish this soon um i really enjoy the writing in this book like it's so accomplished and the world building is incredible there are so many like tiny details to this world that are just yeah really amazing um also it's the sort of book that has it's got three maps um if you've watched some of my previous book videos you know i like a map and it also has a big list of characters in the beginning that's three pages long i am enjoying this and i think when I go, um, I'm going away for a week tomorrow. Um, I'm going away tomorrow for a week and I'm going to take Ordinary Monsters by, or is it J, M, J, J, M, J, M, Mir, I can't remember. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but I'm going to take Ordinary Monsters and that is the first in a series. Um, I waited a year for the paperback to come out and the UK paperback cover is kind of shitty uh, but I bought it anyway. <laughs> so uh, Ordinary Monsters is I think like 700 pages so because I'm only away for a week um, I'm at my parents house and I, I don't know how much time I will have to read so I think that I'm safe just taking one book. Um, I'm trying to pack fairly light so I don't want to have to take multiple books so I thought I'd just take that because yeah it'll take me a little while to get through and yeah that's that's an update I hope you enjoyed this um this is gonna be really long um but yeah I am still knitting but uh to be honest my heart kind of lies with the journaling and stationary aspect of my youtube channel at the moment um I'm really sorry if that's not what you followed me for or if that's not really what you enjoy watching um I just really love filming those videos because it is much more of a um hobby to me than uh I mean knitting is my hobby but I also talk about it every day at work so I hope you're going to understand that like it's a bit of a fine line to walk for me um but yeah I do do um I do have my Patreon and I do do knitting updates pretty much every single week on Patreon and there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make it onto Instagram because I am mainly focusing on my planner Instagram account at the moment um which is Bronte Plans uh but yeah my knitting account has been a little bit neglected um Sorry, it's getting really stormy outside. It's starting to rain and it's absolutely blowing a gale. Um, so yeah, a cozy afternoon is in order. Um, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, so yeah, my knitting account has been a little neglected, um, but yeah, the Patreon has that stuff as well. It's three pounds a month. It's not super expensive. Um, and it just kind of enables me to 
uh, get stickers or um, I think what I'm going to do uh, is use the money for Patreon from this month uh, to put it towards my Hobonichi things for next year. So yeah, if you're a member of my Patreon, you're helping me, uh, you know, buy things that are really special and that mean a lot to me. So I'm really, really grateful. And it just kind of makes this all a little bit more viable as a thing that I spend quite a lot of time doing. So yeah, that's a little rant, but I hope this was uh, interesting and yeah, I I will try to maybe do knitting updates every other month or so. Um, let me know. Let me know what you want to hear about. Um, if there's something specific that you want me to talk about, I could maybe try and do a more specific video in a few months time. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And um, I will speak to you next week. Uh, next week will be some kind of planner video. I haven't quite decided yet. I think I will be filming at my parents' house. So yeah, we may be limited by um, what I can, uh, what I'm taking with me and what I can film there. So we shall see. But thank you for being here, everybody. And I will speak to you next week. Bye.